All right, let's play a quick game. I'm going to give you two questions. No Googling allowed. Ready? One, what's the capital of Australia? Two, now, who was the 16th president of the United States? You probably got the second one easily, right? But how confident are you about the first one? Don't cheat. Just sit with it for a second. Now, here's the twist. If I told you right now that you can Google one of those answers, which one would you choose? <sighs> See what happened there? Your brain's already making decisions about which piece of information is worth remembering and which you're willing to just look up. That's what we call the Google effect. And it's not just a trivia game. It's changing how our brains work and it's happening to you every single day. Let's dig into why the internet is quietly rewriting your memory and what that could mean for the future of human thinking. Have you noticed how easy it is to forget things these days? Not the big stuff, but the small, everyday facts, the kind of information we used to store in our minds like it was second nature. Maybe it's a phone number, directions, or the name of someone you just met. Instead of remembering, we Google it, we type it in, we save it, and we move on. But have you ever wondered what's happening to your brain each time you do that? This isn't just about convenience. This is about how the internet is slowly rewiring our brains, changing how we remember, and even if we remember. Psychologists call this phenomenon the Google effect or digital amnesia. But it's more than that. It's a shift in how human beings engage with information and how we're losing something our ancestors prized, memory itself. Let's start with what's happening at a neurological level. Every time we search for something instead of recalling it, our brains are learning to rely on external sources for memory. We no longer have to store information internally because we know it's just a few keystrokes away. In evolutionary terms, this is brand new territory. For tens of thousands of years, our ancestors honed their memory skills, relying on them to survive. Without writing systems or search engines, ancient cultures developed powerful mnemonic techniques to retain vital knowledge. Take the method of loci, an ancient Greek memory technique where people would mentally walk through a familiar place and associate each location with a piece of information. This wasn't just a party trick. It was essential for survival. Imagine passing down an entire lineage's worth of information without ever writing it down. The brain was once a fortress of memory, but now that fortress is crumbling stone by stone. Today, we don't even bother walking through the metaphorical uh, loci anymore because Google has replaced it. The need to commit information to memory has been outsourced to our devices and our brain's ability to encode new memories is weakening because it's being used less and less. And here's the dark side. What happens when we lose the tools we've come to depend on? If tomorrow Google disappeared, would we remember the essential information we need to get by? Would future generations even develop the capacity to retain complex knowledge? There's a very real possibility that we are not just altering the way we think, but permanently changing our brain's architecture for future generations. Genetics and epigenetics come into play here. Our ancestors had to memorize entire histories, lineages, medicinal knowledge, and survival techniques, shaping their cognitive abilities over millennia. This created a kind of genetic memory reservoir. We inherited their ability to store vast amounts of data within our brains. But with every generation that relies more on external technology than on internal memory, we may be genetically weakening our ability to memorize. The brain's capacity is not infinite. Cognitive offloading, outsourcing memory to technology, can potentially alter how much cognitive space we preserve for essential knowledge. Epigenetics, the idea that environmental factors can affect which genes are expressed, might suggest that future generations will develop a reduced need for memorization. The more we rely on technology, the less our brains will be primed to store long-term memories. What does that mean for our descendants? They might inherit brains that are excellent at navigating digital systems, but incapable of recalling essential knowledge without it. It's as if we're setting up our future selves for dependency, for mental weakness. But it wasn't always this way. In ancient civilizations, memory wasn't just a tool. It was sacred. Knowledge was passed orally for centuries. Think of the Vedic texts of ancient India or the epic poems of Homer. These were vast volumes of information stored in the minds of individuals who trained their memories to perfection. The idea of forgetting something as basic as a name or a number would have been absurd. 
But today, we've entered an era where forgetting is normal, even expected. And that should scare us. It's not just about losing the ability to remember facts, it's about losing the skill of remembering itself. Our short-term memory is getting worse, and our long-term memory is suffering because we're not engaging those neural pathways anymore. When you don't use something, it weakens. Memory is no different. The ability to retain knowledge is one of the most critical traits humans have developed. Yet, here we are, casually letting it slip away. The ancient Greeks and Egyptians once treated memory as sacred. They trained their minds like warriors. But us, we've handed that power over to algorithms. We're becoming dependent on something that could disappear in an instant. So next time you reach for your phone, ask yourself this. Are you remembering or are you forgetting? The choice is yours. Because memory isn't just about holding on to the past, it's about holding on to who we are.